Hello, my name is Bob. Welcome to A Short Stop on Pool. This week is a little something different. I'm featuring two racks and a variety of different shots, all from a single session of straight pool high run attempts. This one plays out like a spaghetti western. I'm going to play the shots in the order that they were introduced in that movie, beginning with... I have a very slight angle on this break shot, and what I see happening, this is just a straight force follow. And I'm hoping the cue ball is going to hit the rack, bounce off, and then burrow back through. Let's see how well that works out. Well, <laughs> it started to burrow and then stopped, so that was not nearly a forceful enough stroke. Not happy about that, because I'm in the middle of a run and I want to keep it going. But I call the two ball pretty quickly. That's my only shot, and it's not all that tough of a combination, but... Any three ball combination is difficult. What I have going for me is that the two ball is close to the pocket, and these are five inch pockets, so if I don't hit it too hard, I've got a good chance of that ball falling. Now you see me taking careful aim. There are times during a rack where the shots are typical and normal, and you just need to keep your rhythm going and play and flow, and there's other times where you need to recognize that it's time to slow down and take real careful aim. Make sure of what you're doing. And that's what I'm doing here. You know, see here I'm aiming again. I'm going to need to use the bridge, and the cue ball is really close to this ball. So what I'm going to try to do is look like a little, little bit of a nip draw shot. I see the cue ball hitting the 7 and the 8 and coming out somewhere center table where I'll have a shot on the 3 or the 10. Not going to hit this very hard. Let's see how this works out. Couldn't work out much better than that. Uh, the two ball hit the point, but it hit it softly, so it still wobbled in. Thank you, five-inch pockets. What I really like about the result here is that the three and the 15 are my break ball and key ball. Either one can be a key ball, or a break ball, and either one can be a key ball for the other. So uh, all the balls are in one quarter of the table. Uh, this looks like a very easy and workable rack, but it's not. It's an ugly rack turns out to be an ugly rack anyway. And the problem that I see are these two balls. I need to get these open. There's no combination. I need to nudge them open. So what I'm trying to do right here is shoot the 10 and get an angle on the 4 so that I can just stun the cue ball into these balls. And I have two insurance balls. Real simple, right? Except that, oops, I didn't get the angle I needed. So this is what contributes to this whole rack being an ugly rack. So I'm thinking to myself, no problem. I'll just draw the cue ball back to here. I'll have a good angle on the 13 to try and draw the cue ball over there. What do I do? Draw it too far. <laughs> I can't pocket the 13. I can't shoot past the 7. Not very happy about that. Trying to figure out what to do. I'm coming over to here to see if maybe there's some type of combination here I can play, but I can't. These balls, are they don't go anywhere. I've got to nudge those balls. So, okay. The six, the seven one combination isn't all that tough, and I need to cut the seven just a little bit to the right, which means I can stun the cue ball or draw the cue ball over this way. So I'm still all right, no problem, right? Well, let's see how this turns out. It looked like it was going in the right place. I had a good draw stroke on it. I think I had a little bit too much spin. Yeah, I wanted to go right into those balls. And it, the cue ball actually curved away. I think there's a little bit of curve in that. Too much stroke on that shot. So still a real ugly rack. The only shot I have is this eight ball. I can just barely see it past this stripe. This is not the, ball, the shot you want to be shooting halfway through this rack. And I, I, I might be able to hold it for the six, but that's going to make it pocketing the ball even tougher. So I'm just making this ball, and the cue ball is going to slide over here. I'm just going to let it go. I know I've got the seven ball. And so now I'm fortunate that I have an angle on this seven because I can try to slide the cue ball back over here, angle on this stripe, and draw the cue ball into those two balls. That's what I'm hoping to do. This is a difficult shot. It's easy to overcut this ball. It's easy to undercut it. Plus, I'm trying to not hit my 315, which I failed to do. And I overcut the ball, but it still went in. Thank you, 5-inch pockets. Luckily, I have not messed up my break ball, key ball combination. I can still break with the 15, use the 3 as a key ball. I'm still going for an angle on this 13 to draw the cue ball over here. Now, I've got to cut this ball. This is thinner than it looks, and I'm loading this up with a lot of inside English. I want to go two rails because once I hit this rail, I'm going to come off and get the angle I need. 
Still a real ugly rack. Have, still have not solved this problem, and over half the balls are gone. Somebody wants to come over and say hi to me. Um, and I do not have an angle to draw the cue ball into that nine. So what I'm trying to do now is go to the rail, lots of left spin on the cue ball. I'd like to hit that 14 ball full and send it over here to open these up. And I'm going to hit this with some force. I've got some draw and a lot of left English. I'm going to hit this hard enough to get that cue ball clear. So I'm going to get a so I hopefully can get a shot. And you can't ask for much more than that. Would have been nice if the 14 was straight in because I'd like to shoot the 14 followed by the nine. These balls are not good for trying to get back over to uh, on my key ball. One of these balls on the bottom rail, actually, this is the best K2 ball, that stripe right near the pocket. So yeah, look at that. All I wanted to do is nudge the 14 with the cue ball, and it goes right around it. So it's still an ugly rack. And this is what, the third combination I'm going to have to shoot? That's an ugly rack when you're, all, you're shooting combinations every other shot. Fortunately, I'm almost straight in to where, where I need to contact the nine ball, and the numbers on the 14 are facing the cue ball. So I'm picking a really precise target based on where the one four, I can really pick a target for this combination. And the 14 should bounce off the rail over here. So all I have to do is stop the cue ball and get a shot. So that turns out really good. I'm not quite straight here. I don't want the cue ball down on the rail. I, just, I want an angle so I can hold the cue ball just here. And then I'll, uh, it'll be a simple matter to just spin the cue ball two rails to center table for my cue ball. Here's the line to the pocket. And so I want to be on this side of that line. So this is, you shoot these drills. You should be shooting these drills all the time, getting the cue ball to center table. And this time, center table means verti the vertical axis, I mean the long axis. I want to be on short or close to that line, which I did. And this, this two rails out of the corner is just ideal to get there. So this is a simple matter to get on this break shot. And we've got a lot more shots to go in the rack of the week. So I'm going to show the break shot here, but let's skip ahead. And then we're, next we're going to get to the bad shots. This is a real nice cut angle on this break shot. And I've gone. I've gone over twice to check my angle, but this is a really good angle because I don't have to hit it very hard. The cue ball is going to have lots of energy coming off this ball. So this is just a straight high ball, nice smooth follow stroke. Don't need to hit it all that hard, not even a 5 out of 10 on their power scale. And the rack should open up pretty well. And you can see the action on the cue ball. It backed up and, and looped forward. That's an ideal break shot. Okay, let's go to the bad shots. If you enjoy my videos, be sure to like and subscribe. Click the bell to be notified about new content and leave a comment or a suggestion for content you'd like to see. A follow stroke should keep my cue ball out of trouble on this break shot. Oh, and you have to tease me too, huh? Sure, I can see the two ball. I can stun the cue ball into position off the rail. And then from the ashes of a bad shot, I come out smelling like a rose. Just follow two rails for position on the break ball. No problem. Uh, problem. Ah, perfect position on my K2 ball. What could possibly go wrong? Well, you could forget where the pocket is. I know that being stretched out leads to understroking the ball. And why don't I just play position for the five in the side anyway? Maybe the answer is that this gives me an opportunity to show off. All I have to do is bump the 13 ball and I'll have plenty of shots to choose from. Uh, make that one shot and a combination. And another chance to show off, I guess? This looks like my best chance to make a break ball and I should have plenty of shots to choose from no matter what happens. Unless, sometimes you've just got to pretend you're playing nine ball. I just need a small angle and position on the break shot will be easy. Uh, well, not against the rail. All right, inside English with a rail bridge. No problem. Uh, problem. Ah, uh, an easy textbook end pattern. Uh, where are you going? Where are you going? 
Oh. Which led to another chance to show off. Or another chance to look stupid. Nice, a textbook break shot to keep the run going. Or to do my Jason Shaw impersonation. And now what you've been waiting for. To start this rack, I've got a typical inside angle break shot. Really love when the cue ball comes off the bottom rail and hits another ball and it keeps the cue ball down table. Got a good spread of the balls, no, no trouble balls. The obvious shot is the eight, and I'm, I just want to nudge this ball up. I have three potential break shots to work with here, and right now I've, I've just noticed the pattern that I want to shoot on this table, and I wonder if you see it. What I'd love to do is preserve this two ball as a key ball for this ball as a break shot, but I need this ball and I'm, I'm doing something a little different than I traditionally do. I'm going to use this two ball to get these up table balls. I'm going to get rid of these balls right away. Then I have a half table game to play. And I think that's smart. That's kind of old school straight pool, get those up table balls right away. And I, I don't think it's all that necessary with today's equipment, but I really like it, especially in this instance. And the reason why is I noticed right away with no trouble balls, three potential break shots, which I don't really need, I can come back down table from these up table balls and climb the ladder. I want you to look when these two balls and the two ball are gone, this is my break ball. I can use this as the key ball. So we want to look diagonally from there for the K2 ball. One of these three balls probably is the, the five is the K2 ball. So I've eliminated these five balls from the equation already. When I come down table from the seven, because I'll go two, nine, seven, I'll get a shot on this stripe and watch this. Stop shot, stop shot, stop shot, slide over, slide over. Climbing down the ladder. And that's something that I covered in an earlier video. So that's what I instantly see. And I may not see the entire pattern, but no trouble balls and everything else is set. You want to get those up table balls and play a half table game. I'm going to play this in a little bit sped up. I'm not going to talk through every one of these shots. I'll just play it real quickly and, and, and check it out. Watch how this plays out. Pause for a second here. Right now I'm about to shoot the one ball and as I review this video, I think that's a mistake because I could shoot the 15, 4, 10, 13 and then use the one ball in the side or the corner for that matter to get on the five. And that's probably a little bit better pattern. As it is, I get real good position on the five, but the leaving the one ball here would have made that easier. This break shot is just a center ball stun pretty hard. The object ball is far from the rack, so I'm not sure if I'm going to come to the side rail or go up table. I just want to hit this with a good stroke and get those balls separated. As it is, it comes to the side rail. Uh, beautiful result. Easy shot on the five to start, and we're in business. If you enjoyed that video, I've got lots more racks of the weeks in this playlist. And check out this rack of the week to see several racks from Jason Shaw's historic 714 ball run. And as always, check out my book, A Shortstop on Straight Pool. Just go over to shortstoponpool.com. Thanks for watching.